The latest figures show that we have over 300,000 homes in America being foreclosed every month. Over 2.5 million homes have been foreclosed in this country. We have an unemployment rate of 9.5%. People are walking their mortgage because that's the only way out of this entire mess. My wife and I, we go out at nighttime right around and about 75% of the homes out here, you'll see midnight moves. And they're just leaving them. They're just walking away from them because you can't sell them for the price that you bought them for. There's a direct link between the lack of protection to the consumer and the home that is underbuilt, overpraised, and oversold, and the collapse, financial collapse, that we have in this country today. The day we first started looking at homes, um, we liked the hometown country atmosphere of Hutto, and we thought this would be a great place to retire. You're out there looking at homes, and you see this is a new subdivision, brand new homes, and you go in and talk to the salesperson, and of course this model is, is beautifully decorated, the house looks great, um, and they tell you that you can move into this house with little or no money down. Lennar made it extremely easy in buying their homes. They had an incentive that it, their homes had everything. Lennar representatives basically told me I would get additional discounts on the home if I used their lender. They go in and, and they, they close on the loan. They sign a bunch of papers. Of course, they don't read everything they're signing. Uh, they simply want to get this process over and get into their new home. Lennar told me that it would be basically a waste of time to get a third party inspector out here uh, because they had already had the home inspected and everything was up to par. It would basically be a waste of money on my part. And then at some point after that, uh, they become aware of some of the problems. The very first day that we moved into our home, we noticed multiple problems, among which there was a knocking in the living room wall, and that was resulting from loose pipes that were not fastened down. Within the first couple of months, um, we started having problems. Um, the driveway cracked in half, uh, nails started popping out of the sheetrock. We had constantly shingles on the roof coming off and lifting up. We had shortages, which caused us to lose our uh, big screen TV and a computer. They're not poltergeists, they're not imaginary. They're real construction defects, which um, will, will have their, their source either in, in one of two areas. They'll either be emanating from uh, poor construction or and or uh, expansive clay soil. We had uh, problems with big large holes in our yard and Lennar had to keep coming out for a couple of years and bringing out truckloads of dirt to fill in the holes. It caused the fence to fall down. In some cases the noises uh, become uh, louder and louder and the walls begin to shake. And it's all through here. It's real bad in the, in the master bedroom and in the dining room and in our former dining room, it's the same thing. And they, and they come out here, they repair these, and they don't even last maybe three months. And then they start cracking again and peeling, and sooner or later you'll have paint all over everything. And we contacted a Lennar representative uh, and asked them to take a look at it. And uh, it was disclosed that they were having numerous uh, complaints. They were repairing a lot of the homes in the neighborhood. Your gut feeling about the whole process, it goes from concern to alarm. The builder has come out and quite often will profess, uh, you know, surprise uh, at what's going on. Um, they don't understand, but uh, they'll do the best they can to fix the problem. Lenar said they were doing some repairs in the homes and we questioned the uh, repair process and what was actually the source of the problems. Kind of got some conflicting answers from them. Well, Lennar will come in and patch cracks. They will address the superficial problem. First they said that the sheetrock was uh, nailed on improperly. Then they sent out a report that said the pre-existing year 
the weather, there was a lot of rain and there was soil movement. If your foundation is moving, if your foundation is experiencing heaving and contracting, we have to understand that this soil out there is some of the most expansive in the entire country. When a drought occurs, it contracts uh, greatly. When there is a lot of rain, it expands. I was furious, my husband was too, because we are in our retirement ages. We didn't want to um, have a lot of problems with a home. That's why we bought one that was new. And had we known that it was on expensive clay soil with arsenic contamination, we would have never purchased the home at all. We buy our home from Lenar. We move in. Um, our kids play outside like every other would. Uh, they're playing on the dirt. They could be being exposed to arsenic and, and, and high levels of that. And it's very, very worrisome but to me, my wife, and, and um, we're kind of afraid of uh, what's actually out there. This is not the American dream. The problem exists because under the Brownfield Act, which is a federal law that was passed in 2001, a developer can buy contaminated property. They can be put on the honor system to do cleanup. They then can sell that property to a builder. So the builder has no duty to disclose to the homeowner um, about the, the contamination. And the, the homeowner, of course, finds out about that after the fact, and they're stuck with the home. This is, uh, this is a law that simply invites, frankly, disaster to homeowners. On the dates that they said they were removing the soil, remediating the land, I uh, looked up on TerraServer to look for a footprint of uh, activity going on on the land, and uh, the land was undisturbed during the time that they reported to the TCEQ that the uh, land was being remediated. It clearly uh, looked like um, a lot of the documentation was not adding up with what um, I was seeing using satellite imagery. So anyone doing due diligence on the property out here would never know that it was part of a VCP, a voluntary cleanup procedure. Um, it was a brownfield. Um, no one would have any idea. There's no state agency overseeing saying you cannot send, sell this piece of land which you know to be polluted without putting a deed restriction. If Lennar sells land such as that, then the injured person can sue Lennar for all the damages. And if children get sick for playing on land that Lennar should have notified them about, then Lennar is liable for all the damages. And if someone's sick for years, then they have to pay for all their care. And that's supposedly the deterrent. In Texas, there is absolutely no requirement that a builder be licensed to build the largest purchase that a consumer will make in their lifetime, that is their home. Until September 1st of 2009, there were only three requirements for registration, which is not licensing. One, you, a builder had to be 18 years of age. Two, they had to be legally in the country. And third, they had to sign a paper that said that they were trustworthy. Those are the requirements that existed prior to September 1. Now there are none. I think that if a person comes in to buy a home, they should be told everything. They should be shown the proofs of these homes being built, you know, built perfect, built right. If you buy a home, that's just like if you buy a car. If your car breaks down and you have so much trouble with it, what's going to happen? You'll take it to a lemon law and they'll buy the car back from you. You know, they have to, that's state law. But it's not here in the state of Texas. You cannot make the buyers buy your home back that's coming down, falling down behind you. I asked Lennar to buy the home back and they have refused. They told me explicitly 
The NAR does not buy back homes. We build them. If there's a problem with a mortgage, if a mortgage is written between a, a land developer such as Lennar and a homeowner, and the mortgage fails because the homeowner uh, loses so much money that they want to walk away from the home, or because the land is polluted and the medical bills caused by the pollution cause the home buyer not to be able to make the mortgage payment, then the financial loss is passed on to the owner of the derivative. So there's no deterrent. The company that wrote these bad mortgages can go ahead and write more bad, bad mortgages. In the past, they would lose money and they would go out of business, or their shareholders would tell them they have to stop and get new management. The people who live in the Legends of Hutto and, and the other subdivision uh, operated by Lennar, we have found mold problems that really harm people. Uh, for example, uh, there's a lady over in Hutto in one of the subdivisions whose husband uh, is a, a Vietnam veteran who has trouble with his lungs. And uh, he had an Agent Orange experience during the Vietnam War. And so anything like mold affects him very quickly. Mold started getting into the windows and uh, we had mold contamination throughout the home. It was coming up on the side of where the windows was installed. The most toxic mold that was in any of the rooms was in our first bedroom. It was causing problems with my lungs. Well, I could just barely breathe on the inside of the house and I was rushed to the hospital uh, various of time and I had to have be on life support where they was physically pumping oxygen into my lungs. On June 17th of 2009 of this year, my husband and I met with Sean Chandler. Sean Chandler is the Texas president for Lennar. During that meeting, which lasted over two hours, Sean Chandler told me that the chances of HUD coming back and doing something really bad to Lennar was very great. It is falsifying a government document. The government document that Sean Chandler was referring to is this form. It's a HUD form 92541. It's required on all FHA and VA loans and it explicitly asks certain questions among which is the home built on expansive clay soil. On my document, Lenore put an X under no for everything, for including that it was not built on expansive clay soil. At the bottom of the document on the next page, it states that false certification could lead to fines and it's a felony. That's a tragedy, not just because of a forged HUD document where Lennar literally said on a government document, is this project home built on expanding soil? Yes or no, we have the document. They lied, the Lennar rep said, no it's not, when it was and he knew it was. I think he felt that um, they were gonna probably be penalized by HUD, but they would just have to pay the penalties. The more I researched, the more I started seeing a pattern with reports of uh, neighborhoods in Florida being built on top of bombs. Um, El Toro, um, they purchased that property and it has high levels of contamination. Um, Hunter's Point, uh, dealing with asbestos out there. Um, the list goes on and on and on. 